we have a suit of tests that are could be classified as both dynamic and static. The static tests are usually just looking at code and trying to analyze what potential things could happen from that code. Uh, this is the code from the apps or additional assets that could come um, from the, just using the, the app. And the dynamic tests are basically, we use a phone, a normal phone in a control environment. And we have sets of sensors that tell us what is happening underneath the phone, what is happening in the phone and what transmissions are being sent. With these, we're looking at what is actually happening. So the pros and cons of the dynamic and the static kind of like um, merge each other well or merge with each other well. With the dynamic, we see what actually happens. With the static, they give us uh, sometimes the possibilities of what could happen um, that sometimes the dynamic could, could, we could miss with the dynamic tests. The tests that we're looking at reveal what types of personal information are being collected, things like name, things like email, but sometimes it could be more contextual information, the name of your Wi-Fi, the hardware identifier of your Wi-Fi, could be identification information about your phone, like the IMEI or what carrier you use. And it could, in some cases, it can be additional information about your house, about your geolocation, about other devices on your Wi-Fi that are connected. We're interested in seeing not just what data is being collected, but who, is, who that data is being sent to. Uh, in some cases, we classify that as first parties or third parties, whether they're like analytic services or just other entities that might have gained access to that data. It's important for us also to see what types of permissions the apps are requesting, um, not just because the apps could access that information, but sometimes because of with the fourth point, we talk about the SDKs. SDKs are software that can be integrated into an app um, for multiple reasons. It could be just layout or just um, flipping the images upside down or, or small things like that, but it's usually also um, utilized for integrating services. For example, I have a geolocation and I want to send back to the user uh, restaurants nearby or the closest uh, grocery shop. Um, that could be done through a, a API um, by sending that geolocation. And usually these services, these uh, maybe Foursquare or Google, uh, Google Maps have SDKs so that um, a developer can include that into the phone more easily and make use of these services. The important thing about the permissions is that sometimes these permissions are also available for these SDKs. So there's like little third parties that are within the app that sometimes we as users don't see. If I don't, I've downloaded the Candy Crush app, I only think that my data is going to Candy Crush, but maybe there's other entities that are part in there uh, through these SDKs. The more permissions that Candy Crush asks of me, the more permissions these third parties might have as well. 